I don't need you to be intimate with me. I've gotten this far on my own. I did. I, were you here? You were not here. So why would I need you now? I'm just letting you know what, why it's all happening. You can cancel me. You can have the whole culture cancel me. I'm just letting you know as a prophet why it's about to happen. See, we can't lose forever. We can't be oppressed forever. And some of y'all are so shell-shocked or you got PTSD, no disrespect for those who have it, but you're shell-shocked. You got PTSD. You can't, you, you, every time looks the same. Every season looks the same. You can't see change. You can't move to change because you shell shot. So when somebody talking like me, you can't move to the change. You can't do the change. You can't move to change. You can't do what's necessary to be done. You can't do it. You can't do what's necessary. That's what I'm trying to show you. That's what I'm trying to show you. And so, so, um, God is lifting me up with a Moses, um, a deliverer anointing. An, an anointing to defeat governments and kingdoms. There's power, there's spiritual power to that's in the kingdom of God that subdues kingdoms, not people. Not beefs, not uh, smokes, and no little gangster gangbanging stuff. I'm talking about whole kingdoms, defeated and destroyed. God has put power on his people to destroy whole kingdoms and whole uh, nations. This power is on me. That's why I don't want you to see me No, like nobody you ever met. I'm not one of the people, they were who they were and I am who I am. And that's another part of people being shell-shocked. You don't know who I am. You think I'm somebody of the past. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not anyone of the past. I'm here addressing things now as they are now. I'm addressing things now as they, as they, uh, as they are now here. And so why would God equip me to be defeated? Why would God put me in a situation to be defeated? He's empowered me to survive. See, the problem with your community is you, you don't talk because you're scared of dying. This is why we haven't gotten nowhere. This is why we're not getting anywhere. Because the, the oppressors are people that try to oppress people. They can't oppress me. The people that try to oppress people have, have thrived off of your fear of, 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 of what they can do to you. Oh, you start talking, you're going to end up missing. You start saying something, it ain't nothing but slave plantation mentality. You acting just like a slave on the plantation. Well, you know, if we say this, you know what's going to happen. It is like that. It's exactly like that. You explain to me why nobody's talking about it. Explain to me why you have not rebelled in the proper way. There's a proper way to rebel. So what I'm trying to tell you is this, man. Whoever you think I am, I'm probably am not that person. If you think I'm going to be somebody set up for the mark, you're sadly mistaken. What's going to happen if this country does not meet my demands is total destruction from God. I'm not going to do it. God's going to do it. And this is the thing you got to understand. The Mal Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr., they were not pop, wealthy, popular people. They didn't have billions of dollars. They did not. They were not rich. But they are still today August 25th, 2022, they are still the most valuable people in your country. You have not found no one better with all this money. Yeah, everybody got money. Now you see the difference. You see the difference. It comes back to what I was saying, people better than other people. 
people use money to feel better than others or think they're better than others. They act as if they're better than others because they have possessions. Right? But they're not a high quality person necessarily. Not necessarily. Money does not always indicate that a person is a high quality person, like they had some high quality about them. In some cases, they do. But in all cases, they don't. And sometimes they lose their quality in the process of their success. In other words, they become jerks. They become people that don't care anymore and they just have their money. See, that's the thing about being rich. You can get it and then change. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't think about that part, did you? You you don't know the devil, do you? He done, a lot of these people done got rich and they changed. Oh, forget about them. I'm not that concerned. I know I got all this money and it ain't going to run out. <laughs> people done got rich and changed, bro which makes them a low quality person or whatever quality they went down to, whatever they changed became, that's the level of quality they're on. Okay. So all I need you to understand is, um, who, who I really am. I like, I'm, I'm, I'm not, as they tell you, I am not going to do anything for free in your country. I'm not going to do any. I, I don't even like America. I, In other words, I don't have a preference for American perspective. I don't have a preference for the mentality and the, uh, the energy, the vibration of America. And, and that's based on the present America, not all through the whole history. The present day Americans... Then it's 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 nothing, and what that means is the the high quality people are getting older. That's what it means. That's what it means, and the low quality people are the children, which me to me I would say the twenty somethings. When I say children in this context, it's twenty somethings, the teenagers. They they we are their parents. My son is fifteen. My son that I have, that I brought into the world, is 15 years old. That means my generation, which is Generation X, are now the parents of American society. And, their, and, our, and our children are basically the energy. It's, it's, that's why it's getting more hopeless and more hopeless. Because with every generation that's in, in America... It's getting worse and worse. The the ignorance is worse and worse. The lack of education is worse and worse. The lack of being informed is worse and worse and worse. It, people talk about being awake. They're not awake. Awake on what? Conspiracies? Awake on what? What you're awake on? Let's talk about it. What, what big banks? <laughs> Anybody know there's big banks? Greedy people? That's it's, That's not awake. Awake is knowing that America has 44 states with child marriage. That's awake. Well, it opened your eyes, didn't it? <laughs> I opened your eyes now, didn't I? Okay? And see, I'm going to survive. See, see, the thing about, I'm going to tell you something. And I need to say this. I don't care how people take it. The problem in with, with the American community is that you you sit back and you wait to see what's going to happen to a person before you join them or give them the proper protection. And in my personal opinion, with Martin Luther King Jr., Martin Luther King Jr. should have never been at that uh, Lorraine Hope Motel. He should have never been there. This man was already talking on a higher level that black people were scared to talk on, first of all. They were scared to talk on that level. He already had the courage and therefore was empowered to talk on that level. Empowered by God to talk on that level. 
He was doing, he, he, he first had courage to do it and then God empowered him while everyone else was scared. All the money at the time when he was uh, in leadership, a lot of black people had money. Why didn't he get the support, the financial support that many black people had? So that he wouldn't be at a motel. That's what I'm talking about. He shouldn't have been in no motel. So that tells me with all these big hotels that was there then, they had huge hotels then for the famous people, right? Why wasn't Martin Luther King Jr. in, in, um, in a hotel with the famous people? That's what would happen now. If he was alive now, he would be in the Hiltons, the Ritz. I mean, the Hilton, yeah, the Hilton, the Four Seasons, somewhere like that. He ain't going to be at Motel 6. You're going to put a Martin Luther King kind of character in a Motel 6? Are you crazy? Where he's, where he's subject to all the common people. I'm showing you where you're making mistakes. You don't know how to raise up a king. You don't know how to support one. Black people, many of them sat back and watched and was waiting for that to happen to him. And what they should have been doing was they should have been supporting him and pulling him out of harm's way. He shouldn't have been in no motel like that where he was that vulnerable. That's the that's a king. You, you don't make him that vulnerable to everyday people. So that lets me know you didn't take him seriously. You sat back and watched and you was going to wait to see what happened to him. You're doing the same thing with me. You sitting back and waiting to see what's going to happen. And you've always made that mistake as a people. That's what you do. You sit back and watch and see what happens. <clears throat> let's see if it's safe to do that. And that's why you ain't got nowhere. You ain't got nowhere because you're still waiting to see if it's safe. Safe to say this? Is it safe to say that now? Is it safe to do this now? I don't care if it's safe or not. It's time for it's time to stop playing. I, I don't care if it's safe or not. That's what they've been using. You you are scared. Let's keep it real. And if it was many of us that was that was not scared, we would have blew this all away a long time ago. They can't kill everybody. Another country would step in. You see how they get your ton of vision? You so busy worried about Americans. If you all had the courage, you think Russia going to let you die. I know you forgot about that because you were so busy focused on America. You think Russia is going to let them kill all these people that's telling the truth. If we if it was all of us telling the truth, you think another country ain't going to step in and help us. If the American community and government is just going wild on us and just killing us, you think they're going to just let them do it? But you didn't consider the whole world. That's a seven. That's a seven. That's a seven. Because you didn't consider black man, black woman. You didn't consider the rest of the world. If you would have opened, if we would have all opened our mouths then they would have came, then, then another country, if they would have tried to war against us, another country would have came to our rescue based on inhumane, uh, inhumane government. But you got so scared, all you could think about is America and the powers that's here. There's other powers all over the world. That's why real black people are waking up and they're joining Russia. They're joining Russia because Russia is the competition against those who oppress you. That's why. You oppress me, I'm going to join your enemy. You play with me, I'm going to join your enemy. That's the best thing to do. Yeah. I'll fix you. I'll join your enemy. That's, and, you, and you, all you could think about is being here in America, being here in America. You should have you should have asked for help from Africa, too. Yeah, you should have been talking to Africa. You ain't do that either. Not really. 
You could have been asking for help all over the world and you just sat here and let them oppress you. Like you ain't, you can't do nothing. And that's when you messed up. See, we all have to realize our mistakes. It ain't about disrespecting anybody. It ain't about disrespecting uh, the legacy of anybody or, or the, uh, the blood, sweat, and tears people pay. I, I salute that. But if we sit back and act like there's no, it's, uh, no mistakes, then we'll make the same mistakes. And that's what's happening already. It wasn't a perfect situation. Martin Luther King Jr. should have never been in that Lorraine Motel. He should have been somewhere where else well protected. I'm pretty sure he had death threats. So why couldn't they get money together and put him in a safer motel hotel? That hotel was the equivalent of a Motel 6. It was the equivalent of a motel. It was actually lower than that. It was a it was a I don't know if it was a I'm pretty sure it wasn't a chain. Lorraine was not a chain of motels. I don't think so. So it was even lower. It was like a little single motel. How could he, come on, man. And it was because everybody was sitting back waiting to see what was going to happen. Waiting to see what was going to happen to him. Why everybody saying they praising him. You know, black people better than that. They were sitting back watching, seeing what was going to happen to him. Yeah, you know, he can't be doing all that. Come on now. Yeah, everybody wasn't singing his praises. Come on, man. You know black people, our own people better than that. You know our own people better than that. They, they were not sitting up, everybody loving them and everything like that. Think about it. Keep it 100. There were some people obviously sitting back saying, well, I don't know how far he's going to get doing that. I don't really trust him like that, you know. I don't know. I don't trust nobody. He might be part of them government. He might be part of white people. You know, they come on. There were some people thinking all those things. And, and the way you know it is because they were not full heartedly supporting him. Why was he at a Lorraine motel? He didn't have financial support. I know you don't want to hear it. They ain't want you. Don't, nobody ain't telling you the truth. And the reason why he ain't have no financial support is because everybody was sitting back waiting to see what was going to happen. Because he was sitting here facing these forces. And it's the same thing you're doing here. You sitting back to see what's going to happen, waiting to see what's going to happen. That's It's the same thing. You ain't nothing but looking, looking ch chicken eating, porch watching people. White people, black people, all the Americans that's watching. You ain't you ain't doing nothing but to me but sitting on the porch eating chicken, watching to see what's gonna happen. That's all you're doing. You ain't you ain't you ain't helping me. You ain't doing nothing for me. So all you're doing is the equivalent of eating chicken, sitting on the porch. That's all you're doing right now. That's how I see it. That's how I see it. If you sitting up looking and listening, you ain't nothing but a cheek, chicken eating, porch sitting person. You know what the Bible calls you? The Bible calls you a busybody in other men's matters. It calls you a busybody in other men's matters. That's what you are. That's all you are. You're no help to our society. It's just the same thing as Martin Luther King Jr. his time. All these people sitting back watching and looking, they were no help to him. All you're doing is sitting back speculating, in other words. You are speculating. Spectators. That's what you are. That's your label. You're a spectator. And you know what I do with spectators in this situation? I'm cursing all the spectators. I'm cursing every spectator. You shouldn't be here. <laughs> What's your purpose? Therefore, if you don't serve a purpose, that's automatically a curse. That's a seven. Well, when Jesus Christ passed the fig tree and it had no figs, he cursed it. When you a spectator, you have no purpose. When I pass you by, I curse you. You don't have any purpose. All you're doing is sitting up yapping, eating chicken, sitting on the porch. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, that, this is dangerous. This is dangerous. I don't want nobody around here. 
Understand my position. Understand my energy. Understand my character and personality. I don't want nobody around here. I don't want you here. If you ain't got no money in your, to give me, I'm at least, hey, at least I ain't de deceptive. I'm telling you how it is. You don't got no money and you ain't got no information for me and you can't look me face to face in my eyes. You can't look me in my face and tell me what it is. You're not man and a woman enough to do that. Then you're beneath me. And you're beneath me because you're not man or woman enough to face me. I don't care what you say about secret society, this and that. I think you're scared. I think you're fraudulent. I think you're cowards. Because at some point, you got to see the person face to face. I don't, I don't care what you say you are. Secret this. You could be extra deluxe secret. You could be an extra deluxe secret society. A deluxe secret society. You could put deluxe on it and everything. But at some point as humans, not aliens, you have there's a principle in our community among humanity that you have to look someone face to face, right in their face. I don't care what you're talking about, you're a part of. You at some point you gotta look somebody face to face. So if you can't do that, you're beneath me. You're beneath me. And it deals with your level of quality that you have chosen to be. Why you're beneath me. If you if you were on my level and you was just as I was, like you acting like you got the reason you would been like you got the right to be here, you would have been pulled up and seen me face to face. That's what I do. I look people in their face. You can't say I don't do it. You can't say I don't do that. I do what I gotta do. I say what I gotta say. You are yet to do that. That's why we can't be together. Because see, even if we, you were part of me, you would have to go show your face. You would have to. You would have to. I don't, I don't deal with cowards. If they told you I was a coward, I don't know how they see that. I've been too many places to be a coward. I don't got too much respect to be a coward. I done got respect coast to coast, California to New York, Staten Island, Brooklyn, Harlem. Come on, Florida. I got respect everywhere. It's not even one state. It's not even one city. I done got respect in Philly. I done got respect everywhere. I don't need New York. I done got respect everywhere. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I look, look, man. If you if you if you if you don't serve no purpose, you are cursed being here. I'm just tell you how it is. I'm not dealing with anybody that doesn't serve a purpose. If you don't serve a purpose for me, you cursed. You cursed. If you don't serve a purpose for me and you're here yapping, which I despise, I curse you. And I guarantee you it's gonna stick. I, I look Christians if you choose if American Christians specifically if you choose not to to curse and bring misfortune on something that is 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 useless then that's you that's you but I can show you in the Bible I can open up the same Bible I don't have a trick Bible I can I can show you in your same Bible how prophets men that God designed for his purpose cursed children, let alone grown people. So if God is the same yesterday, as the scripture says, he's the same today, yesterday, and forever, then his principles don't change. That's what you need to understand about the old, understanding in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Because a lot of y'all, y'all so stuck on the New Testament, you think the Old Testament don't matter anymore. That's a seven. And the part you forgot about is the part that God principles was never wrong. So when people got cursed in the, in the Old Testament, it was never wrong. So how's it wrong now then? That's a seven. <laughs> how's it wrong now? So God was wrong then? 
when the children got cursed. Now you see where I'm going with it, don't you? It, um, the Christians here in America, you you have become a behavioral club. You don't you just believe in love and believe in just be, the forgiveness. And the Bible says it's a it's a time of war and a time of peace. It's a time to love. It's a time to hate. You you have not been to war here in America as a Christian. That's a seven. You have not been to real war. You use the scriptures talking about, oh, we don't fight against flesh and blood. So what Samson was doing? Samson with the long hair, when he killed the when he killed all those people with a a, a donkey bone, a donkey jaw, which was probably sharp and was cutting their neck and all of that. Why, why, what, how, what was that? What was David doing when he had to fight Absalom, his son, that was relentlessly fighting against him? Huh? What was the children of Israel doing? What was Moses doing? I can go on and on and sh with showing you. The Red Sea killed all those people with Moses. Now, did Moses physically do it? Not physically speaking, but you can say even there that he was, he was fight. There was a conflict between flesh and blood. The kingdom of God was facing flesh and blood and they were consumed not prayed for and not forgiven see the truth of the matter is your American Christianity has been controlled by the community the culture and even some would say the portions of the government politicians they control you they come in and manipulate you and main and give you in 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 in, in, in uh, give you money even to start to keep preaching a certain message. Oh yeah, give them a lot of money on that message. So now you think that's success. So you stay right there. You don't proceed any further into other messages that you know you should be talking about. Come on now, ain't no church perfect. Ain't no ain't no it look. When 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 the Lord when Jesus Christ talks to the, the book the churches in Revelation, he said he had problems. He, this is good. He had problems with each of the church, right? So you don't think if you was in you was in you, that God don't got no problem with the church in America? Okay. Again, in the book of Revelation, Jesus Christ had a problem with certain with the churches, right? With each church, he said, I, I, you're doing all this right, but I have this against you. You don't think God got nothing against the American community, the Christian community? See, you haven't been operating in the fullness of what it is, the fullness of what it is to be a Christian. Jesus Christ had problems, like I said, with the churches in the book of Revelation. And you know how this community, America is anyway. You don't think he got no problems with you. Yeah, I know. You've been painting yourself like you're doing it all right. Because you've been comparing yourself against the Americans. Now you got to compare yourself against teachings like this. Well, you can't dispute it. The curse of the Lord is in the Bible. The curse of the Lord is in the Bible. So, was it wrong then? So how is it wrong now? Elisha cursed 42 children then. So how is it wrong now? That's a seven. How is it wrong now? See, <laughs> what you don't understand is how you ever, oh, that's a perfect example. How you, you, when you watch the American, the animal kingdom, right? It seems so merciless, right? Like no mercy. How if a, a zebra wanders on the water, right? It wanders on the water. And then a crocodile or alligator just pulls it down, does the death roll, tearing flesh off the zebra, doing the death roll. It's just part of life, the kingdom. It's the same thing with this. 
the kingdom of heaven will pull you down in the water and do the death roll with you in your community. It's a part of the wild. There's no mercy in the wild for men, women, or children. If baby animals go out into the wild and they wander, they're dead. <laughs> a lion's not going to say, well, you're a little baby. You're a little baby deer. Get home. That baby deer is dinner. But only in your kingdom you lack understanding because you put children in this improper place in the whole kingdoms, in all the kingdoms. And you see the animal kingdom and it's a perfect example of our kingdoms. It's a perfect example. If you, if you use children as weapons in any form or fashion, I'm going to tell you this now. This is for the white community, black community, Mexican community, everything in between. If you use children in any kind of game, any kind of testing somebody, you're using them as a weapon. And here's the punchline. Weapons are meant to be broken. If, they, if we're in war and you're using a Pacific weapon, those weapons will be broken. Even if it's men, women, or children, or whatever you're using. You can use animals. Whatever it is you're using. If you're using it for psychological wars, if you're using whatever you're using it for, if you're using children, you can't use children in war and expect.